feast of the Holy Family of Father Joe, pastor here at St. John the Beloved. And let us begin this Sunday Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment now and acknowledge our sins and our failings for the times that we seek God's mercy, pardon, healing, and peace. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for his sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is glad in all children and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten, firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed, Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handwork. Blessed shall you be, and favored. Blessed, Blessed are those who fear the Lord, and walk in his ways. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed, Blessed are those who fear the Lord, and walk in his ways. ways. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are the those who fear the Lord and, and walk in his ways. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer, and coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of the Lord was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. 
grace to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful time of the year. We can see the beautiful decorations here at St. John the Beloved Church. And we come together here as a family, as parish family. And that is what we celebrate this first Sunday after Christmas, the Feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And during this past 10 months, during this pandemic, many of our families have really, truly felt out what their families are like living together so closely sometimes it became tense and becomes irritable. Too much of a good thing can be too often too much. And so we know that there is sometimes is that tension of being with each other, especially when you're living so closely and we're confined for such a long time. Today's beautiful uh, gospel and today's beautiful feast day reminds us what family is all about. Actually, family is what discipleship is all about. To be a disciple of Jesus is what we hear about. When Simeon says to the Blessed Mother, and a sword will pierce your heart, because she was to be the first. She was the first disciple to follow Jesus, and she was the foundation of the home that was to be the home of Mary, Joseph, and their child, Jesus. Jesus entering the world as God coming into this human family, sanctifying the human family, and that is where we model our life today. What composes of a, of a good family is different. Some families are huge, other families are small. There is some that are older, there are some that are younger, there are various dynamics out there. Wherever you live in your household, whatever you consider your home, is really the relationship that we're talking about today. Some are, are widows, widowers, some have been separated, some have had bad experiences. So whatever it is, God sees you as your family living together. And as you live together, how are you living? We're supposed to live the way we heard in our scripture today, to honor your father and your mother, respect the elderly, respect human life, all life is to be respected, and to also respect the other people that we live with, to cherish them, to make sure that they are in every way held up to the esteem that they are. And we too are to reflect these things not only with one another, but we too are to bear the burdens of other people. No one is perfect. So when we have an imperfection, some kind of infraction of what we think is just and not right in a family life, you try to correct it, and sometimes you have to bear it patiently out of love for whoever that person is in your life. So we try to keep an even balance. Remember, wherever there's chaos, that is not a sign of the Holy Spirit. That's not God dwelling. God never brings chaos. God always brings peace and brings us out of chaos. And so we always aim to have a non-chaotic life in our world today. And in many ways it's tough uh, because we're self-centered. Sometimes we're, our egos get the best of us. Pride always overcomes us. So we have to be very, very cautious. There is always the beautiful story at this time of the year that I remember about a saintly family, uh, the Matan family of Monsieur France. They were the parents and the siblings of St. Teresa of the Little Flower. She's a favorite of many, many people. Priests love St. Teresa, and she likes priests. So St. Teresa lived in the 1800s. She died in the late 1890s at a very young age. But while she was a very young girl at Christmas time, she lost her mother. She lost her mother when she was around three years old. And since she was the baby of the family, and her family was somewhat affluent, her father was a watchmaker and jeweler, so they, they lived pretty well in this part of France, and she had whatever she wanted. And because of her mother dying at an early age, her older sisters doted over her, as did her father. Her father doted over her very, very much. 
And up to 11, 12 years old, she never combed her hair. She never made her bed, did everything for her because she was the baby of the family. And she would win her way by not, uh, she didn't win what she wanted, she would cry, and because of that, they would always give in to her. So she was very sentimental, and she was very much sensitive to the needs of herself, especially. So it was at Christmas time of 1886. She was around 12 years old, and she went with her, her sisters, and she went with her father to St. Peter's Cathedral in Issue, France. And after midnight mass, they came home, and it was the French custom to put out your shoes. They called the magical shoes. And that's when Santa Claus would come, uh, Noel would come and put gifts into these shoes. And so she expected it to happen, and she went upstairs and was changing, and she overheard the conversation of her older sister with her father, and her father said, she's getting too old for this. She shouldn't be doing this anymore. She, we can't baby her anymore. And poor Therese was overcome again by her sensitive nature, and she was starting to cry, and she got hysterical. And she prayed, and she said instantaneously, a grace came upon her. She calls it the grace of Christmas 1886, where she felt this peace come over her and a sense of maturity. And she said to herself, you're right, I am doing too much that's self-centered. And from that moment on, she became of a more giving person, less sensitive to her own needs, but more sensitive to the needs of her father in particular and her sisters. And she became a very loving person that gave of herself to the family. And that's why she was well loved later in life, especially in the convent, when she went in the convent because she was extra sensitive to the needs of those people around her. So it's a good story at this Christmas time to remember that maturity in our faith Maturity in our relationships with one another is very important. Husbands have to mature, wives have to mature, mothers, fathers, children have to mature in how do we respect, how do we love each other. And we have the perfect image of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. I always side with St. Joseph because St. Joseph lived with two perfect people, our Lord Jesus, who is God, and the Blessed Virgin Mary, who never sits. So St. Joseph is very quiet in his home in Nazareth. We don't hear anything from him because he was a good model of balancing his goodness in his life. Joseph gave of himself as the foster father to Jesus, taught him how to be a good Jewish boy, gave him a trade, kept the house going, and remember Mary depended on him. The woman at that time didn't have uh, the uh, capabilities of advancing unless they had a strong person like Joseph to take care of them. So she depended on Joseph, and Joseph depended on her to take care of the home, to take care of the child, to take care of the family in her responsibilities. So you see, it was a perfect picture where they took care of each other. And the two of them took care of the baby Jesus and let him grow, as we were told, in wisdom and in grace in his life. So let us, as Christians, as followers of Jesus, because we are disciples of Jesus, follow in the same way, especially in our home, where you live. Be it one person, two people, several people, whatever it is, let us love and respect each other and be a holy family. So let us now pray and ask the Lord to reaffirm our faith and our commitment as we say, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Holy Family inspires us to live in love and unity with God and one another. We offer to our loving Father in Heaven our prayers for our needs and those of our family in the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the family of the Church, that we may give respect and dignity to all God's children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may they recognize families as the fundamental building blocks of society and seek to enact programs that support and strengthen family life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among nations and in our city streets, that God's love may be visible in the Christ child, may turn hearts from violence and open new paths of peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families separated by war, distance, or discord, that they may be reunited in God's boundless love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in all holy vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, consecrated life, married life, and the single life, that God's sons and daughters may live out their vocations through lives of charity, prayer, and service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For the sick and for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones during this holy Christmas season, may they know the peace of the Christ child and the support of family and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they rejoice with our Lord and Savior in heaven. We remember the recently deceased, including Edward Michelson and Nancy Stapley. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of our parish community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for the many blessings and graces you have bestowed upon us. We ask that you would graciously continue to bless us and our families through the intercession of the Holy Family and our patron, St. John the Beloved. Fashion us into a parish family that reflects your light and love. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, human hands have made, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Now pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and in your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shown upon the eyes of our mind, so that we can recognize in him God made visible, that we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, the power of heaven, we sing the hymn of glory, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broken, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you more the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop, all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. John, the Beloved, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son Jesus Christ, through him, with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Throughout the world, we are a family that prays the way Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. In the peace
peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas day celebrated as best as possible. Today is December the 27th, and it would be the feast day of our patron, St. John the Beloved. Remember, St. John the Beloved is the disciple who was, we believe, the youngest of all of Jesus' disciples. Um, they're all pictured with beards except for St. John. St. John, we always see him as a, as a young lad that followed the Lord, and the Lord loved him, we were told. We were told. Lord said that he was the child in the midst as a family of apostles, and he always noted over him in certain ways. Today is the, the day when we celebrate, if it's your custom, to drink wine today. It was a European custom on St. John's Day to drink wine because St. John was there at the Last Supper, but also they said later in life he was given wine by people who uh, wanted him to be martyred, and they tried to kill him. And so they gave him poison wine, and as he was ready to drink it, it somehow uh, broke apart, and he was unable to drink the wine. And because of that, you often see in his statue, him carrying wine, and a snake is coming out of it, that there was evil in there, that the goodness of his sainthood overcame the evil that was in that cup, and that God saved him. So today is the day when we celebrate him by sharing wine with one another as a family. So from our parish, our family parish to you, we wish you a happy feast day, a beautiful feast of the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And remember, it's the saying is true, those who pray together stay together. The family that prays together stay together. Maybe that should be the new oracle this year as we celebrate the feast of our patron, the feast of the Holy Family. And so, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless our families, our parish family, friends, and all people, that they may be blessed with health and prosperity and peace, especially in this new year. Let the church say amen. Amen. May all of our families live in harmony with one another, respect for life for one another, and be gracious and magnanimous, forgiving to one another. Let the church say amen. Amen. And may those who have gone before us be in the home of heaven, our families and friends. May they share in the glory of the resurrection of Jesus, and may we too share in it. Let the church say amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen.
The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a happy, happy, and safe, COVID-free 2021. God bless you.